Okay. Okay, recording to the cloud. Thank you. So, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Sam Harlow. I'm the online learning librarian here at UNCG Libraries. Um, I'm going to keep the introduction really quick because I know we're all really busy uh, during this time. Uh, but this is a series that we've been doing for a while on online learning and innovation, uh, where usually ITCs come in and talk to us about different topics to do with instructional technology, Canvas, uh, in this case, creating self-scoring assessments in Qualtrics by Rob Owens. So um, I'm in a chat, going to drop the link to the website where the um, webinar recordings live. This is being recorded and uh, then is, event is put on YouTube where that's where we close caption it uh, down the road. Uh, so keep that in mind as well if you have any tech issues. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, uh, because these are pretty brief 30 minute webinars, you can just drop them in the chat and I'll monitor them and let Rob know when there's a nice break in the presentation. Um, so, if anyone has any questions, they can uh, go ahead and start putting them in the chat. I'm going to put my email in there in case y'all need me for tech issues on the back end. Uh, but Rob Owens, uh, one of the Bryan School of Business and Economic ITCs, Instructional Technology Consultants, going to be talking about creating self-scoring assessments in Qualtrics. So, Rob, are you ready? Yes, I am. Thank you, Sam, for that introduction. Again, my name is Rob Owens. I've been working at the university off and on for the past 20 some years. Currently, I'm in the Bryan School of Business and Economics, one of two ITCs, as Sam mentioned. And so I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to create self-scoring assessments in Qualtrics. It's pretty easy to create these self-scoring assessments. It just takes a little practice. So I'm hoping that after this webinar, you will have uh, the general skill set in order to create these types of assessments within Qualtrics. So one of the goals, I'm calling this a brief intervention, is like I'm an instructional technologist, but I also have training in sport and performance psychology. I teach uh, performance psychology part-time for another university. And so when I'm working with my students who are going to be working with different types of organizations, we always talk about this idea of brief intervention. Let's get in there. There's an organization might have a particular problem. Let's assess what that problem might be and develop an intervention for that problem. So um, in terms of what we're going to do today, I'm just going to cover the basics of the scoring features within Qualtrics. But if you would like to know more about this later, especially how you can use Qualtrics for adaptive learning, uh, please feel free to contact me after this session. When I first came to, when I first started using Qualtrics for scoring purposes, it was because we have a student here in O'Brien School who is blind, and so he wasn't able to use some of the assessments in his management courses because they were using outside uh, vendors like Pearson, and the assessments were just not accessible. And unfortunately, Canvas, you can take tests in Canvas, but they're not self scoring, like if you needed to take a uh, self-scoring assessment like the Myers-Briggs, you couldn't like develop that within Canvas, you would have to develop it with an outside tool. And so I start to experiment with Qualtrics in order to develop some of the tools for this particular students, as well as the tools that I use when I'm teaching um, uh, as an adjunct and performance psych. So one of the assessments that I developed within Qualtrics is called the ALQ. It measures authentic leadership behaviors. I'm not going to really go into what authentic leadership is in depth because this webinar is not about authentic leadership. But I will mention that in terms of authentic leadership behaviors, there's four things we're looking for. We're looking for self-awareness. We're looking for an internalized moral perspective. So the leader, does the leader make behaviors based on external influences or is the leader making uh, or is the leader's behaviors and decisions based on their own internal morals and values. Balanced processing, does the leader take into account what other people are saying about this particular issue as well as what they think about that issue? So that's the balance there. And relational transparency is the leader, um, is basically what it means is the leader uh, really authentic when it comes to his relationships with others. Like if he, for example, our, our, in the business school, we have our, our deans are our leaders. And so relational transparency is talking about how, um, how transparent they are in their beliefs and values when it comes to working with others. 
So let me, I'm going to pause for one quick second. I'm going to uh, show you the actual, the actual uh, questionnaire so you get an idea of what I am talking about. Before we go back here, let me, I'm going to stop sharing for one second. And, oh, here it is. I found it. I love Zoom, but it, it's a great product. But sometimes with my, like, if I don't have my reading glasses on, like I don't see those little small icons. Okay. So this is Qualtrics. I'm assuming that all of you have had experience with using Qualtrics. Since this workshop is, is pretty short, I'm not going to, or this brief intervention is very short. I'm not going to have time to show you uh, all the features in Qualtrics, but I want to just show you one of them that uh, one of the uh, questionnaires that I created. So for example, under Management 375, I mentioned that we have a, a student who's blind to one of our programs. I created a number of assessments so he could complete the Management 375 course. I also created assessments so he could complete his org behavior course. But in terms of what I'm going to show you today, because it's a very short assessment, I'm going to show you the Authentic Leadership Self-Assessment Questionnaire. So I'm going to go on that survey and I'm going to preview it. So I'm just going to click through it. I can list my three greatest weaknesses, agree. My actions reflect my core values. I'm going to say neutral. I seek others' opinions before making up my own mind. I openly share my feelings with others. I can list my three greatest strengths. I'm just going to just click through these different questions so you can see quickly. All right, we're getting there. I think just a couple more. Okay, so you can see here, this is where the scoring comes into place. So scoring interpretation, the self-assessment is designed to measure authentic leadership behaviors by assessing four different components that I've talked about already. In terms of scoring, a high score is anywhere between 16 to 20 and low score is anything from 15 to below. So I took this assessment, you can see that I scored on self-awareness, I scored a 15, so I'm you know, kind of in the middle ground when it comes to my self-awareness and certain things I know about myself and certain things I don't in terms of my strengths and weaknesses. My internal moralized perspective is high, it's a low high. My balance processing is low and relational transparency, being open and honest when presenting my, one, uh, my true self to others is also low. So that's basically what this assessment is looking at. So let me switch back quickly to the PowerPoint. And okay. So in order to create a self-scoring quiz in Qualtrics, there are six different steps. So I'm going to show you these steps within the next uh, 20 minutes. When you need to create the survey, I'm going to create a small survey, recreate just a couple of questions. Then I'm going to show you how to select tools to add the scoring features, create the different categories. In this particular assessment, we have four. Remember, self-assessment, internalized, moralized perspective, balance processing, and relational transparency. Then I'm going to show you how to assign points to those different uh, categories. Then you'll add the descriptive text at the end of the survey. And that is what is going to show you um, the results of the survey, the actual scores, um, including the pipe, pipe text. So you add descriptive text to put the information there, and then you pipe the text. In, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So I'm going to switch back to Qualtrics. Close the preview. And now I am going to create a survey. So in going into Qualtrics, I'm going to select projects to create my new survey. I'm going to select create new project. I'll create my own. I'm going to get started here. 
So this is the main window of Qualtrics. I already had the five questions I'm going to create. So I'm just going to copy and paste them from Notepad. Copy and paste my first question. I can list my three greatest weaknesses, which are first to, of course, um, my own self-awareness. If you start typing in responses like strongly disagree or strongly agree, Qualtrics tries to figure out the rest of your responses. So you can see the automatically added disagree, somewhat disagree, neither agree nor disagree. On the actual survey, um, somewhat disagree is not part of it, so I'm going to remove that choice. And somewhat agree is not part of it, so I'm going to remove that choice. Now that I have my general question, instead of like, since all these questions are going to have go, going, going, excuse me, going to range to strongly disagree to strongly agree, I'm just going to scroll down here to the right and I'm just going to copy this question. Go to my second question, copy the, uh, the prompt. My actions reflect my core values. Copy that question. Question number three, as I seek others' opinions before making up my own mind. Four, as I openly share my feelings with others. Copy that question. Then five, I can list my greatest strengths. So now that I have my five questions for the survey, and of course, you know, the real survey has some more questions than this. I'm just going to actually give it a quick title here, Authentic Leadership Questionnaire. I'm not going to go to tools. Under tools, you have a number of different options. The option I'm concerned about today is called scoring. So go to tools and scoring. You can see here is going to change the window. And the default category is score. This is going to be the total score across the entire survey. And for the ALQ, I don't really need to know what the total score is. I just need to know this, um, the scores in each of the categories. So I'm going to click on score and select manage categories. You can see here, I'm going to add a new category. The first one is called self-awareness. Right now it has zero items. The second category is called balanced processing. The third category is internalized moral perspective. And the fourth category is relational transparency. So now that I have my four different scores, I'm going to go ahead and save those. Now, this is here where, where I find that some faculty create mistakes. And so I'm, and I've done, did this too when I first started using scoring within Qualtrics. It's important that you select the current category or the category you're going to score. So I'm going to start with self awareness. So nothing will change here. You just see the categories. You can see in the survey itself that. All the questions are still listed that I created. Now what I need to do is find the questions that are related to this particular category. So question number one is I can list my three greatest strengths that is related. So I can either start typing in the numbers in these boxes or I can click auto. It just so happens that I designed a survey in a way that, you know, I start with strongly disagree and that's a one all the way through strongly agree, which is a five. If I needed to change this, like if it started with a zero, I could. So that's the first thing you need to do. The thing that then the second mistake that some faculty will make is that they'll forget to change the category and start doing auto in the other areas. So the next thing you want to do is change the category. So I'm going to go to balance processing. I know that number three is I seek other people's opinions before, before making up my own mind is balance processing. I'm going to do auto there. If I make a mistake, I can also clear it out. The next category is internalized moral perspective. That is question number two. My actions reflect my core values. 
And then our last category is relational transparency. And I think we have two questions relate, related to relational transparency, or maybe we just have one. Um, yeah, number four is relational transparency. I openly share my feelings with others. Now I'm gonna go back and double check to make sure I got everything. So self-awareness, I think I only selected question number one, but I think question number one and question number five are related to self-awareness. And this is another common error that some faculty will make. They won't, they either will select the wrong uh, question or they won't select all the questions that are part of that category. So keep that in mind as you are developing the assessment. Once you um, have added each of the categories and check to make sure that the scoring is correct for each of the categories, then you can just say back to editor. You do not have to uh, submit, um, you don't have to click a save button. Uh, once you have done that, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a question block. This will, make, will put the scores on a separate page, because the way I have the survey de designed right now, all the questions are gonna be on the same page. Uh, Qualtrics is not smart enough to calculate, at, at least the way I'm using Qualtrics, is not smart enough to calculate. Um, after I just answered the questions, if, if, I put the, if I put the results on the same page, it's not gonna show the results at all. So I need to put the results on the second page. So I'm gonna add a block so that it'll put the uh, next part on a separate page. Under next to create a new question, I'm going to add what's called descriptive text. So click descriptive text, and I'm gonna say authentic leadership results. I'll give, any, again, I'll do some parts that have more information than that, but for sake of time, we're just gonna put that information in. Then I'm going to put each of the categories, self-awareness. We'll start with self-awareness. Now that we have that there, what we need to do is select piped text. So Qualtrics allows you to add a lot of different things using piped text, including uh, the date and time. You can add a random number. You can add the uh, IP location of the person who's taken a survey. But what we're concerned about today, again, is scoring. And so I'm gonna go scoring and then I'm gonna select self-awareness since that's the score I want to add. Now Qualtrics will then give us four different options. Do you want to put the self-awareness score, which I want to do, yes, or the number of items that were related to self-awareness or the weighted mean or the weighted standard deviation. I'm gonna select score. You can see it puts that funny little code in there. The next, penalized moral perspective, again, pipe text. Scoring, score, balanced perspective, in pipe text, scoring, score, and then our last area, which is relational transparency. Pipe text, scoring, relational transparency, and score. Now that I have all that there, I am going to go ahead and publish it. Close this out. And then I'm gonna preview the survey. So you can see here that I have my uh, survey, just the five questions. I'm just gonna quickly just take this. And then when I go to the next page, it's gonna show my scores. So I got a self, my, I got a nine for self-awareness, um, internalized perspective of two, balance four, and transparency one. Okay. And so that's basically quickly on how you actually create scoring within Qualtrics. Are there any questions? Do you want me to go back over a particular part that might seem fuzzy? Just let me know. Thanks, Rob. Y'all are welcome to put your questions in the chat or just ask them out loud. Um, the other thing I will quickly mention, when you go to scoring and you go back to manage categories, it will tell you, this is another check, it will tell you how many items are in each 
of the scoring category. So you can say self-awareness, I have five items that's related to strongly agree to strongly disagree. So that means there's two questions because there's five options in each question. Balanced processing, five items. So that's one question. Uh, likewise for internalized moral perspective and relational transparency. Uh, what do the results look like again? Okay. Uh, so you can do, I'm going to go ahead and preview and take it, take it quickly. Thanks. And all it is, is just um, adding up each of the, uh, the numbers. So, so this is what the, the person taking it will get. Exactly. So, okay. exactly. Yes. So um, if I just wanted to double check, um, it survey link based, so you can send anybody a survey link and they can take this. Yes. And so when you go into go back, and I have I can um, publish it, or I can actually do distributions. Right. And then look under or do like an anonymous link and just copy this link and send it to anyone and then they could take it. And it can be outside, people outside UNCG and same as a regular survey? Yes. Okay. If you were using it for an actual assignment, um, mm -hmm. what would you have to do? Just add, tell students to put their name as a first question or something? Yes, I would have them put their either first name or their username, email address, you know, just to, yeah, I would have them probably, I would probably gather that information, both their um, name and their UNCG email address if I was having students take this. Okay. And if you don't use the subscores, you just use an overall score, you just use that word score. Exactly. Instead. Okay. Yeah. So if you, if I'm going to edit the question in a pipe text, I would select scoring and just score and then score. Okay. And then that would put the total score across each of the uh, questions. Yes. This looks like a good icebreaker that I was looking for. I was trying to figure out how to uh, have them take a wine survey and then, you know, talk about their wine knowledge. Mm -hmm. so I that's a, yeah, that sounds like that would be a great use case for it. <laughs> yeah, very cool. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah. Are there yeah. any other questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me know if there's any other questions. If uh, Chris is thinking of one or Bonnie, if you think of another one. Uh, just to let you all know, there is one next week in this series on uh, JSTOR tools for text analysis projects. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> if you um, are interested. So um, again, I'll drop this link in the chat. Uh, on this link, it does have um, a sign up button, you know, y'all signed up for this one. So it's on there as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then you'll get a link to join the room. Uh, we also have one coming up next week on the census. If you or your students are um, interested, these are also available for students or grad students in particular. But if you have students who have questions about the census or if you have questions about the census, uh, we're doing census 101 next week at 12 p.m. on Wednesday, March 18th. And then we only have one in April. It's on APA 7 uh, from the library, one, part of our research and application series. So uh, those are all open to sign up. So uh, are there any other questions before we sign off? OK. Great. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. It's quick, short, to the point. We are going to end a couple minutes early. So thank you, Sam, for inviting okay. me. Yeah, and if you don't mind, when you X out of this, since you're the host right now, it should just end the session. But thank oh. y'all. Okay. Bye-bye, okay. guys. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye.